That's a bit better. <laughs> okay, excuse me, a little adjustment there. Um, which side is that one? That side, okay. Excuse me whilst I get ready for the broadcast. <laughs> Good afternoon, welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 479. And today's topic may get a bit deep and dark. Um, the topic today is Me Too is rising up, thankfully. This is something that I'm going to speak about because I've seen a lot of posts in the last few days and particularly today that just like, I need to talk about this. I've spoken about it before, I'll do it in deeper level at this point and some ideas, suggestions for both women and men. And um, actually, I will incorporate that. I had another topic planned, but it'll actually fit into this. So before I get to that, let me introduce myself in case you haven't seen me before so I can give you some context about where I come from. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. This is number 479. Um, so I've done a lot of these. And today's topic, as I mentioned, is Me Too is Rising Up. And that, and for that, I'm thankful, or thankfully, as I put it. Now, let me speak to this a bit. First of all, I'm going to give you an illustration of something that I talked, to a friend about, talked about with a friend of mine this morning. Um, that she confided in me, and, and I, I really was honoring her for her choices, but also the behavior of the man exemplified the Neolith. What's the thing I'm going to call him? Neolithic boy behavior that is so prevalent amongst men that needs to change. So I'll get to that part in a minute. But let me start with the, with the, sto the context to understand where I'm coming from. So, some of my friend this morning, um, keep confidentiality, not saying who it was. Um, but she was telling me how she's really coming to her own. I mean, she really is. She's glowing. She's alive. She's bright. And she's really clear she doesn't need a man, which is one of the biggest things. She doesn't need a man, but she's open to a relationship from a much healthier place. And this is stuff I talk about. So you may watch my broadcast and know about this stuff. But what she was sharing was that this neighbor of hers, a guy she knows that lives close to where she, close to where she lives, um, was talking to her a few days ago. And she, he was complimenting, saying how, how you know she looks so so alive, so bright, which she does. And um, she was saying uh, uh, the context was something framing around. She was it was framed around the context where he was asking her if she was still seeing the man she was seeing, and she said no. And so he went ahead and said, "I'd love to have your number," and say, you know, would you uh, basically wanted her number, and she basically set, st stood for a moment and she said, "You know what? I'm not going to give it to you." And he said, well, why not? And she was saying, because to be totally honest with you, I'm not, I wouldn't be calling you back and it wouldn't be appropriate. And he was stopped in his tracks, first of all, because it was actually a very pure, very honest response. And I applaud her for doing this. So if you're in this situation, follow along with this. But the thing was, is that right after that, he started getting upset. He was saying things like, um, what do you mean you won't be calling me back? You know, and, and, ju and judging her for it. And then he says something in the lines of, you're not that attractive anyway. Now, here's the thing. The transition from, I'd love to get your number, and her saying no, to him saying, we're well, not that attractive anyway, is such fucking bullshit. I'm going to be blunt. I have to, I'm so pissed off about this. I guess I realize that I am. Sorry, excuse my language. I didn't expect it to come through, but it did. Because the fact, the disrespect that he shows, the lack of concern, the locker room, in quotes, behavior was so out of alignment and so disrespectful if a woman doesn't give a man her number because she's honestly not willing to call him back that's her choice and if a man is that um react because i reacted to that so excuse me for that with that if a man is that st stupid first of all arrogant second of all being a man boy to not even respect her choice and to insult her because he didn't get what he wants. First of all, it shows her she made the right choice, to be really clear. Secondly, this guy needs to grow up. Now, I'm going to speak to this a bit more if I can, because part of this is going to be really, I don't know how to hand, my, 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 wrap myself around how to speak about this, because it's, because obviously, as you can tell, it pisses me off. I, I, got, I mean, <laughs> I didn't expect that to come through me, so I apologize if you have tender ears after what I just said. But the thing that I want to speak to is, there's two things I want to speak to. One of which is, we men have responsibility with that we, we as, as a majority have um, abdicated. 
we've men have given up the protector role many many years ago to protect our culture protect our society and protect women so many men now have taken women on as an adversary as a um, victim to be conquered because that's the way a lot of men treated women and seeing all the posts in the last few days which is what inspired this talk in the first place but secondarily inspired this because so many women I know friends of mine but women I, tr I care about a lot are sharing their Me Too stories lately. Now, I know it's because what's happening with the hearings this coming week of the Kavanaugh um, nomination. Um, I'm not going to get into that. But the, the thing about it is a lot of women are standing up now more and more, more visibly, more verbally, and more clearly in um, solidarity with the professor, the woman, and I, unfortunately I forgot her name, who is the woman who's in going to be speaking and testifying and being interviewed what's going to happen at the hearings this week. It tears my heart apart to see my friends, these women I know, t to hear their stories. And yes, I understand it's, it's, it's already happened, but I just feel such a, a sense of, of the, 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 um, the protector of me coming up so much around women I care about because how dare men treat them that way? And in some cases, some of these women have been hurt by the women when they were children, when they were younger. But this maybe epidemic behavior, because it's not so isolated as now as I thought it was. So many women are coming forward, it's indicating to me that it's such a, an epidemic of abusive behavior, by, particularly by adult men to young girls. So again, I mean, it's, it's, it's frustrating to say the least. I mean, it's upsetting me as I'm saying this. We need to change this massively, culturally, viscerally in this country, maybe planet-wide, but certainly amongst people I know. And a lot of people I know are in the conscious community. Now, now, let me say this. It seems to me that a lot of these women in the conscious community may have joined this consciousness and become more aware because of what they went through. Not to vindicate it, not to, not to say yes to it, but the benefit at least is some of these women are taking charge in their lives, and I'm grateful for that part. And, and I'm not seeing them as victims, by the way, because that's the other thing. I'm seeing them as having a past that was victimized. But who they become is warriors and powerful women who own their power, and, I, and I, I worship that and applaud that. But I also feel like I want to protect them from any of these stupid men who don't have a clue. I'm editing myself right now because I really was letting that loose earlier. Of not respecting women. There are so many women who have had to put up with, have been penalized for being women by men who do not respect them it feels very I mean to be honest it feels unfair so many women, so many men carry such a I don't to say this in a nice way I'm not sure there is a nice way to say it I'm trying to find words for this Yes, Sue. Yeah, it needs to change from the cradle. Absolutely. Oh, by the way, quick, quick sidebar for a second. This is a Facebook Live initially. If you're watching it on YouTube, I'm speaking to somebody on, who put a comment on on the camera, which you can't see if you're watching it on YouTube. So I'll get to those in a minute about where you can find them. But this is on Facebook Live. So yes, Sue. Sue, you said it needs to change from the cradle. Yes. So, so thank you for that. It gives me a thought about this. So forgetting what I was trying to say, let me say this. If you are a parent, man or woman, if you're a parent, your responsibility as a parent is to educate your children, both boys and girls, on what true honoring respect is. That boys need to know that women are equal to them. Yes, equal to them. Let me get that one clear. And also that women, sorry, that the, the boys, I'm trying to see how to say this. The tenets, the thing for boys to be with the boys, there is this, there is this, boys will be boys conversation when they're 10 years old is one thing but at the same time boys need to be willing to walk away from other boys if they're feeling like they're being they're being part of a gang energetically to put down somebody else be it a, a minority or a girl or anything else anybody else that is different from them and I know I'm reflecting my own child that being, being bullied at school for being different was something that really Still lives, with, still lives inside of me as part of what my upbringing was. So I definitely feel that the willing to step aside, stepping separate from the mass, from the, um, the mob, that's a better word, to say no to that behavior is what we all have responsibility to do as adults, as children, as anybody. 
So to change it from the cradle is a, requ is a request to all parents out there, men and women, fathers and mothers, that the children you raise, you have a choice. Are you going to be accountable? Are you going to be willing to love them and honor them, respect them as babies all the way through to their 18th year so they learn how to be conscious, aware, caring adults and respect other people of the opposite sex as well? That's a, that's a, that's a um, imitation and demand I'm throwing out to you. Now, I'm not a parent, so I know I'm speaking to, maybe speaking out of turn, but frankly, if you're a parent, I hope this is something you're looking at doing so that boys aren't just boys. They become men who respect women and respect girls as well. There's a, I mean, I'm, I'm putting a quick talk together that's a lot bigger than this, but I'm realizing I'm saying this, there's a, there's a lot of threads in this, but I want to make this clear. As a man who honors women, I'm inviting other men to join me. Um, in fact, if you're interested, men, if you're watching this, I will send you a link tonight because at 8 p.m. tonight, which is three hours from now, three, three hours from now, a friend of mine, um, George Kansas, is holding a blue tent, blue tent, it's a blue tent for men, um, round table conversation online on Zoom. So if you're interested in that, let me know immediately because it's in three hours time. If you are someone who wants to talk about brotherhood as in respecting women and respecting each other, let's talk. Um, and ladies, know that I'm on your side. Know that I'm at your side in, in arm in arm in respect of what you're about, who you are, and a safe place if you want to talk. This is a bigger topic more and more. Women are stepping up. Me Too conversation is raising, rising up, again, which I'm grateful, grateful for. It's not an easy conversation, I know, and to do it publicly it, for the women who I know are posted on Facebook, particularly that's that's public platform. Um, the courage it took and the and the vulnerability it took it touched me deeply, and I really do appreciate it. So, simply put, um, things need to change. Yes, we need to be willing to change together and be willing to step up and own our truth. And if you have some wounds you haven't healed. It's time to heal them, so you don't keep putting visiting on other people, particularly, particularly the men, because a lot of the men, I believe, in the Me Too conversation, I should say, who have propagated the Me Too issue, have come from wounded backgrounds, not to and not to excuse them, but they have wounds they haven't healed, and it's a lot of these men who are hiding their wounds by hurting other people. So, if you're a man who's not yet figured out this time to heal your own wounds, take the time now please step up own your space heal your wounds get support get help and stop mistreating other people for your sake and for their sake um, it's time we are in a, we are at a crisis point in our culture in this society that's so obviously um, expressed through all the leadership out there be it media be it gov government be it, be it entertainment anything where this conversation is no longer a um, passing fad. It is time for change. It is time we change. It is time we come together and speak, talk, and serve each other. One little PS I want to put onto this, because I was reading this earlier, and it reminded me of an article I read about a month ago. Um, something about alpha males. Actually, alpha people, let's put it this way. There's been this talk for a long time how the alpha is one that leads and it takes charge and these men who are alpha males, they're driven, they'll push around and a lot of them are abusive. Well, here's the thing. A true alpha doesn't do that. A true alpha, um, actually there's a book by Greenfield called Servant Leadership. That's really the epitome of the alpha. The alpha is one who serves the community. The alpha is the one in, in wolf society. The, the, the alpha is the one that comes at the back of the group and makes sure that nobody gets left behind. The alpha doesn't like lead the charge and screw you on going ahead and abuse people. The alpha is the best supporter you can get because the alpha is the one that carries everybody forward and walks behind the weakest to make sure everybody makes it. That's the way the wolf pack works and that's where the alpha term comes from. At least in my book it does. So as we as people, we as humans, our job, our role as alphas is to support those weaker than ourselves. That's your assignment from now on. Yes, I'm giving you an assignment. Um, yeah, I need to go shower and cool off now after that. <laughs> that was a bit of a, <laughs> that was a, bit of a, of a rush for me. Um, I hope this made sense to you and some value in it for you. And please, I'd invite your comments, questions below to 
respond to what I said. If again, if you're a man looking for support, I invite you to reach out to me. Send me a message over Facebook. Uh, if you've got a way of reaching me, you know, reach me, um, and I'll, I'll hook you up with that call tonight so you can join our group in the blue tent. Um, ladies, if you need someone to talk to, reach out to me. Um, and that's it. Quick, um, where you can find me stuff because I did mention it earlier. <sighs> this is a Facebook Live initially, it goes onto YouTube and onto my podcast. So, so you know how to find those. On Facebook, I put these replays onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. All my social media is Barry Selby, by the way. So my YouTube, YouTube channel is that. And you can find this broadcast and all 478 previous ones on my Messages from the Masculine playlist. Also on my podcast, which is on iTunes, also called Messages from the Masculine. You can sign up there, subscribe, and download. And yeah, become a subscriber on my YouTube channel. Why not? So with that, I appreciate you watching. Again, these are my daily broadcasts. I do this every day. Tomorrow will be number 480. That should be 5 p.m. Pacific time, I think, which is my usual time. And again, any questions, comments about this uh, topic, this this message, please respond below and I'll, I'll, I'll respond to them after I sign off. Um, yeah, this is, this is the beginning of a big topic for a lot of us. It's time for change. Be part of the change and part of the solution. Because if you're part of the problem, you'll be out of here soon. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.